Welcome everybody to the Baldrige Foundation first quarterly webinar. A couple administrative notes before we get started. Due to the high number of people who are actually on this webinar, uh, we're going to keep everybody on mute until the end. And what we would like you to do is if you have questions that you would like to ask the panelists, which will be answered at the end of the webinar, please type them in the chat box on your control screen. We will track those throughout the webinar and choose questions that we would like to answer from the different panelists uh, once we get to that point in the discussion. The last thing is the webinar is being recorded for future use and it will be posted on the Baldridge Foundation website. So please inform your colleagues and others if they would like to listen in to catch up on it, they can do so at their convenience. A couple things in opening remarks. This is the agenda for this afternoon. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the foundation and current activities and give you an update. Uh, Bob Fangmeyer is going to talk about updates from the Baldridge Performance Excellence Program and Brian Lassiter, the chair for the Alliance Board of Directors over the state programs is going to talk about Alliance activities and initiatives. And then again, at the end, we'll take some questions. Well, things on the intent here. This very first webinar, the intent is just to bring everybody uh, up to speed on some of the foundation's activities over the last couple of years. Uh, what we want to do and what I have come to realize is that we need to strengthen communications across the Baldrige community. And that includes everybody, not just the program, the foundation and the alliance and ASQ, but consultants who are out there working every day with organizations across the country and serve as ambassadors and champions for the program. Baldrige organizations who want to learn more about the Baldrige program, its future, its direction and changes that may be coming down the road. Our partners out there, not only our business partners, but our partners in each of the states as well, who contribute to our success, as well as the general public. And so these webinars will be open to anyone who would like to listen in, learn more about the Baldridge Enterprise and specific initiatives. Uh, just to let everybody know out there, there is a vision, purpose, mission, and value statement on the website for the foundation. And the foundation has an organizational profile that it's drafted. I think it's important that you know we as an organization, each and every entity, uh, walk the talk and take the Baldrige framework and apply it to ourselves. And so as a part of that initiative, uh, over the last year and a half, we have developed an organizational profile based on our current vision, purpose, mission statement, and values. And I want to zero in for just a minute on the mission. You know, our mission is to ensure the long-term financial growth and sustainability of the Baldridge program and to support organizational excellence, performance excellence in the United States and throughout the entire world. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that later on in the presentation, some of the initiatives that we've taken along those lines and certainly promoting performance and organizational excellence uh, throughout the United States includes all of our state-based programs and association partners that are out there using the criteria as well and the framework. So to do that, we do have a strategic plan and along with that strategic plan, we have a strategy map which shows our four strategic imperatives. And I just wanna walk through what's important to the foundation here and our role here in the enterprise and along with state programs as well, um, what we're trying to accomplish. The four key strategic imperatives for the foundation are first fundraising, advocacy, which are closely tied together, board development and foundation operations. All of that is aligned through a strategy, our own budget and accountability and everything that we do. What we're trying to get at, as you can see, is the long-term financial growth and sustainability of the Baldrige program to support organizational and performance excellence, to acquire, attract, and leverage some of the most influential leaders in the nation through our own board, and in the end, apply Baldrige to ourselves. Our vision is to be recognized around the world as the premier foundation for performance excellence in all sectors of the economy. And to do that, we need everybody's help. I'm going to talk about each of these individual four strategic imperatives as we move through the presentation. 
The first being advocacy. Since FY15, when I first came on board and we formed the strategic plan that we currently are operating under, the number one priority has always been to restore the Baldrige program in the federal budget and the president's agenda. As many of you probably saw earlier in the week, we are now back in the federal budget for $2.2 million. This should cover, along with the revenue generated by the program, the program's costs for personnel and operations. This gives us great flexibility in the foundation to go out and begin to fundraise again to historic levels to rebuild the endowment. Two, to develop strategic alliances across the federal government and with association partners and businesses across the country. Priority three, to build grassroots support, including state programs, which are key to us being successful with members of Congress. And so I wanna talk a little bit about the annual federal, federal budget process. In the upper left-hand corner, you see that federal agencies like the Department of Commerce in the lower end of that box, which oversees NIST and the Baldrige program, submit their agency budgets for review by the Office of Management and Budget, OMB, in the Office of the President. The President's budget is due on the first Monday in February each and every year to Congress. That begins the budget process. Underneath that, the House reviews the budget resolution and the Senate reviews a budget resolution and comes to agreement on big numbers. And big numbers are those big numbers for defense uh, and other uh, infrastructure, the farm bill, and those other types of programs around the country. Once the big numbers are known, the 12 House and 12 Senate Appropriations subcommittees begin to put together their reports. The one in red in between that are critical to the Baldrige program and NIST are the Commerce, Justice, Science, and Related Agency subcommittees in both the House and the Senate. Each of them put together their recommendations and their reports, which go to the full House and Senate appropriation committees for markup and resolution. Then they go to the House and the floor for Senate votes and then into conference committee. In conference committee, there's often, if not always, a separation between the Senate appropriation bill and the House appropriation bill. They have to come together to form what is on the right hand side of the screen with the Rules Committee print 11566, the Consolidated Appropriations Bill. That final bill, once agreed upon, is voted on by the House and the Senate and then sent to the Office of the President who either vetoes or signs it into law. And as you saw last week with the omnibus bill, the president, the president signed the omnibus bill into law and that was the FY18 appropriation, which we're currently in from one October 17 through the end of September in 18. Now the complexity in all of this is that we are always each, almost each and every day dealing with three appropriations at one time. We just got the FY18 appropriation signed and we're in the middle of the year. In addition to that, we are currently working the FY19 budget with members of Congress because that budget was delivered by the president back in February of this year. And so we're currently working with those appropriation subcommittees, Commerce, Justice, Science, Related Agency subcommittees right now on the 19 budget, which will begin one October of this year. And in addition to that, the Baldrige program team, NIST and the federal government agencies are putting together their requests right now, their budgets for FY20, because the FY20 budget will be due from the president next February. And so it's always a very complex environment dealing with all three budgets simultaneously that are always in process. So in the US Senate, Commerce, Justice and Science Subcommittee, these are the people who are critically important to us here in the Baldrige program. Now, it is important to mention that every single Senator and every single member of the House of Representatives is important and can have a role to play 
because many of yours who are not on this necessarily on this subcommittee have the ability to reach out to those who are on the subcommittee and help to influence their actions. Those kinds of coordination and synchronization take place across the entire Senate and House on an annual basis. So please, just because your particular senator or member of the House does not appear on these two charts here, this and the next, that does not mean that they're not important to the process. However, Chairman Shelby and Ranking Member Gene Shaheen have been extremely cooperative and willing to work with us and have done outstanding work in convincing all the members of the subcommittee to support the Baldrige program and to support everything that it can do for the American economy in all sectors. It has been very important for us to not only work with members of the New Hampshire State Baldrige program, and I'd like to thank Ann Warner and her chair, Tom Raffio, who have done great work in helping us tell the Baldrige story to Gene Shaheen and to all of those people in the great state of Alabama who have helped us work with the chairman, not only to get an appropriation for Baldridge, but to also stand up a new state program in Alabama. So Linda Vincent and her team, thank you to everything that you're doing down there at UAB, the University of Alabama at Birmingham, to stand up a state-based program and take Alabama into the future. Uh, at one time, Senator Shelby actually used to hand out the awards in the old Alabama State program. So he is eager to see an Alabama program again across the great state of Alabama. In addition to them, uh, some particular ones that I would like to mention in this group, uh, Shelly Moore Capito from West Virginia, who has supported Charleston Area Medical Center and is one of the first members of Congress to attend a Baldridge National Award Ceremony in Baltimore, as well as Senator Joe Manchin, Senator Schatz, Senator Lindsey Graham, Senator Bozeman, Senator Kennedy, Senator Alexander, they have all been vocal and instrumental in helping us, as well as the professional staff, Jeremy Wyrick, Molly O'Rourke, and Cola Rathburn, uh, very willing to work with us and to help work and guide us through the process to get Baldridge back in the budget. In addition to the Senate, I want to mention those in the House of Representatives who have been key to helping us as well. Uh, Senator Congressman John Culberson from Texas, who chairs the House Committee. Uh, he is in from Houston, Texas, of where there are a number of Baldridge Award recipients. And I particularly want to thank uh, Dr. Mack down there at the state program, running one of the best state programs in the nation, who has helped us work with members of the delegation in Texas, and particularly John Culberson. Uh, I want to thank Jose Serrano from New York, who has been very, very helpful and willing to do more to help the Baldridge program. Uh, a very strong supporter of everything that Baldridge can do, especially in healthcare. Particular member of Congress, and as an example, someone who does not sit on the House subcommittee is Sam Graves from Missouri. Congressman Graves submitted for the last three years, five pages of written personal testimony on the importance that Baldridge has played not only in his district and to him, but also across the state of Missouri and across the nation. All of this information is contained on our advocacy update and advocacy section of the Baldridge Foundation webpage. I urge each of you to dial into that to include Congressman Gray's testimony, which can be used with uh, in a number of ways in reaching out to members of your delegation in expressing what Baldridge can do for the country and your state in particular. Grassroots support. Also contained on the Baldridge Foundation webpage, you're going to see Baldridge impact by state. Here you can see the Baldridge and Texas impact statement. Uh, we connect directly to the Baldridge Alliance website and 
a number of other tools that are available to help you reach out to members of Congress. It's critically important that state programs keep all of their information up to date and work with the Baldrige program to update their fact sheets on an annual basis because these are used by us with members of Congress each and every time that we have a meeting with them. And as many of you know, I'll normally call a state program director just prior to meeting with their member of Congress just to see if I can get any updated information. So again, uh, a lot of tools and resources available on our website. Uh, please take advantage of them and help us keep them up to date as much as possible. The next thing I want to talk about is re-engaging the president. While we have been successful in getting Baldridge back into the budget, and we look forward to growing that into the future, one of the things that we also feel that we need to do, as you all know, is re-engage the president of the United States to recognize award recipients, whether that be at the national conference or in an event at the White House. And so we are working aggressively with members across the federal government to do exactly that. In addition to the president's office, the president's cabinet. We've had a number of really important high level meetings in particular with the different cabinet heads across the federal government. Uh, Linda McMahon of the Small Business Administration who's helping us connect the Baldridge Excellence Builder and the Small Business webpage of the NIST program directly to the Small Business Administration website, as well as the Department of Education meeting with Secretary DeVos and getting the same connection to the education page on the NIST website so that there's a direct connection between these federal agencies. So as people dial into education or small business, they can resource the tools, access the resources and tools that the Baldur's program offers. We've reached out to a number of others. Secretary Elaine Chow remembers uh, not only being an intern for Mac Baldridge, but she is also a strong supporter of the program as the Secretary of Labor prior to being the current Secretary of Transportation in the Bush administration, Secretary Chow was instrumental and actually attended several national conferences uh, with the president. Uh, we're working with the Veterans Administration to try to bring Baldridge back to the VA and there are several VA facilities and healthcare systems that are using it and doing extremely well with it. And so we would like to reinvigorate the VA's engagement with the program. And Dr. Carson is talking about using Baldridge along with Sonny Perdue, the Secretary of Agriculture on the top there, uh, across their federal agencies. Two people who are very familiar with it, as you know, Dr. Carson was at Johns Hopkins University Hospitals and remembers Baldridge being used there as well as in his own private practice. He was also a keynote speaker at the 25th uh, Baldridge Award Conference in Baltimore, Maryland. In addition to that, uh, Sonny Perdue, the Secretary of Agriculture, the former governor of the great state of Georgia, used to hand out the awards himself in the Georgia state-based program. So we, across the federal government, we are reinvigorating relationships and re-energizing the federal government to support Baldrige. One of the things that I'm extremely optimistic about is the appointment of Secretary Wilbur Ross and especially uh, Walt Copen, who is the new Undersecretary of Commerce for Standards and Technology and the NIST Director. Um, Walt and I connected early on in the nomination process. Um, he invited me to attend his uh, confirmation hearing, which I did. And then I invited him in the lower right hand corner, you'll see with along with Rulon Stacy to our first board meeting um, for the foundation. He has been a true champion of Baldridge every step of the way and is doing everything within his power to advance Baldridge, not only across NIST, but across commerce and with his boss, Secretary Wilbur Ross of Commerce, who you will remember last year, just coming on board in his new position, was excited about the opportunity to attend and preside over the Baldridge National Quality Awards ceremony and pointing out Baldrige's contribution to the economy. So we have a leadership team right now throughout Commerce and NIST that are just excited about Baldrige, excited about doing everything they can to help support us. And this is probably the most encouraging leadership team um, that we have had in recent memory. A 
couple other things I'd like to talk about when it comes to advocacy. One is Communities of Excellence 2026. Uh, coming on board early on, I recognize the value of Communities of Excellence, what they could contribute, and just the alignment that we needed to have with this organization as we move forward in a total Baldridge effort. And so I asked Lowell Cruz, the chair of that organization, to join our board, and he has. And we have worked together over the last several years to make some serious accomplishments uh, in communities across the country. Uh, I have to thank Stephanie Norling for driving this program uh, for Lowell and Rick Norling, her uh, father. Uh, the first five communities recognized for their commitment to community excellence took place during the Baldridge Fall Conference this year out in Phoenix. And that was an exciting opportunity to recognize these communities uh, for being pioneers with the Communities of Excellence framework. That has led to, that initial success has led to several high level meetings uh, that I have been able to attend uh, on behalf of Communities of Excellence and along with them. Uh, one of them is with Heidi Green, the Chief of Staff of SUNY Purdue, in working with rural communities and rural development uh, we have had follow-on meetings with Ann Hazlett, who is the assistant to the Secretary for Rural Development, and Gina Sheets, the director of the USDA Innovation Center. Um, all of this will hopefully lead to a grant for Communities of Excellence and their pilot programs in Northwest Missouri. And so a lot of these connections that we're making right now are leveraging Communities of Excellence because this and cybersecurity, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, are probably the two freshest the two most exciting developments within Baldridge in quite some time. Cybersecurity. Uh, one of the recommendations that I would make to all of our state program teammates out there is to get somebody in cybersecurity and get somebody in communities of excellence, if not yourself, who are very conversant with the framework and who can speak to it, to at least begin to generate initial excitement within your state programs. One of the places I would recommend that you look for a cybersecurity volunteer expert is in a, is in a hospital. If you can find one of your Baldridge based hospitals, they will most likely have a chief information officer, a CIO, and that CIO could be asked to take the Baldridge cybersecurity framework and help teach it and help to promote it within your state based program. Um, I have found so far them to be uh, the most willing and the most conversant because they understand, most likely understand Baldridge already, and they understand the value of the framework and how it can be applied to cybersecurity. We've been extremely lucky with Tony Scott. You can see his picture in the upper right hand corner. Tony Scott has been uh, the former CIO for the United States government in the Obama administration. Prior to that, he was a CIO at Microsoft and General Motors. And this cybersecurity excellence builder was actually his idea working along with Bob and his team uh, and Ellen at the Baldrige program to build the cybersecurity excellence builder. We will again have a workshop at the conference this year. Um, Bob will probably talk about that a little bit later. So again, uh, we have to learn, each of us has to learn at least how to promote the cybersecurity excellence builder because it is a hot topic in every sector throughout the entire country. One of the things that can help you leverage that is this report. Uh, Congress commissioned last year the Healthcare Industry Cybersecurity Task Force. And these were experts that came from across the United States. And I really have to have a big shout out here for Russ Branzell and the College of Healthcare Information Management Executives, of which he is the CEO. Uh, Russ has been a champion of cybersecurity and the Baldrige program throughout that community. What that led to ultimately was a recommendation, recommendation 4.4 from this task force that the cybersecurity excellence builder be further developed specifically to healthcare and used across the entire industry. Uh, this gives us tremendous leverage with healthcare organizations to take a look at the cybersecurity excellence builder and to consider deploying it in their organizations. Lastly, if you remember back to our mission statement, one of the things that we try to do is to promote performance excellence, not only around the country, but around the world. And one of our most exciting partners is Tata over in India. Sunil Sinha is on our board of directors. 
and gives us a international perspective at each and every board meeting on the use of Baldrige. What is really great about learning about Tata is that it is a mega corporation. It consists of dozens of companies from steel companies to food companies to Land Rover to Jaguar and a number of others who are all using the Baldrige criteria to reach the highest levels of performance excellence. And so I had an opportunity to speak at their national conference over there, along with Molly Baldridge and others, as you can see in the picture, and to learn more about this great international partner that we have in Baldridge. Want to talk a little bit about fundraising and some of the things that we can all do together to increase our financial sustainability. Um, Want to have to thank the Synergy Organization for their new $100,000 pledge over time and the channel partnership that we have with them. If you have an organization that is looking for senior leaders, uh, they have a great system of helping organizations find the right senior leaders uh, that best fit that organization. So I would recommend that you use them. Uh, SOAR Vision Group, an organization that just came on board with us, who is a Quest Gold sponsor this year. Uh, I have connected them with a number of Baldridge consultants recently because I saw a great synergy in what they do and what our Baldridge consultants do and how they can work together to develop and deliver comprehensive solutions to helping organizations move through the Baldridge framework and to succeed in building a stronger organization. Uh, one of them was Paul Grizel, the first one that I connected with SOAR, and I think Paul will be available for other consultants to talk to about that, and SOAR will be at the national conference. I would highly recommend that state program directors and all of our consultant community out there get to know the SOAR Vision Group team and see where there is alignment with what it is you're trying to accomplish with your organization. This year, uh, we moved from gold to platinum, the highest level of credentialing by GuideStar. GuideStar is the largest repository and accrediting organization for charities around the world. And so we're extremely proud of that. Equally proud of the combined federal campaign again this year, 2018, we will once again have the opportunity for all federal employees to contribute to their charity of choice and many to include the Army, which under the Army Communities of Excellence program nationwide uses Baldridge. Uh, I would actively um, like to challenge every state program director out there to contact their local Army organization or installation to include the National Guard headquarters, almost all of which submitted a Baldridge application this year, and many of which are looking to submit state applications to get greater insights and strengthen their own application. That is a great community to network with. It's also a great community to network with because all of those people who work on those military installations are always encouraged and always willingly volunteer to give each and every year through the combined federal campaign. Again, this year, the foundation will have a deployable package for you to include a PowerPoint presentation and handouts that can be used to give presentations at CFC kickoff events this September and October, and you can get a portion of whatever is donated out of that particular site back to your state program. And there'll be more to follow on that as we move through the year. Another great organization and channel partnership that we have is with Beyond Feedback. Uh, Beyond Feedback was first um, introduced to me by Larry Potterfield and the team at Midway USA. As you all know, a two-time national award recipient and a self-proclaimed purest Baldridge colony on the planet. And uh, having had the opportunity to go out there and visit with them, I can tell you that that is uh, probably a true statement. But this Baldrige Aligned service that Beyond Feedback provides is an ability to take a Baldrige Aligned survey and look at your customer and stakeholder satisfaction to try and move the needle. And so working with them, you have the opportunity to increase those scores because you can drill down and figure out what it is you can do to make your stakeholders as well as your customers uh, more happy with your products and services. 
They have a 100% customer retention rate of Beyond Feedback, and we strongly recommend that if you're going to deploy a survey, their ESAT survey is uh, probably as good as it gets, especially tailored to a Baldrige organization. And I think, uh, I think Larry and his team will also talk about that a little bit uh, this year out at Quest. And Beyond Feedback will be at Quest as well. Uh, we, the Baldrige Foundation has a planned giving program and we've already had a number of people inquire about it and several who are in the process of signing up for this plan giving. Um, most organizations who are in the foundation philanthropy business have a program similar to this. And so we put one in place in 2017 and we are actively promoting it. There'll be more information in each of your handbags at Quest as well. Amazon Smile. This is an important one that you can deploy across your organization and all of your newsletters and all of the information that you have been on your website to help us. And by helping us, we will find a way to help you in your state programs as well. But if you shop on Amazon and dial into smile.amazon.com, you can register so that each and every time you shop and choose the Baldrige Foundation, each and every time you shop on Amazon, you can get a portion of whatever it is that you spend as a donation to the foundation, and this costs you nothing. This strictly comes out of what Amazon would be charging you anyway. It costs the consumer nothing, but it has a great benefit towards the foundation. And so we would encourage everybody who uses Amazon to take advantage of this particular program. To log on and register, go to smile.amazon.com. Foundation Awards. Uh, we've scaled up our awards program, which are important to the foundation with the Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, our Leadership Awards for Excellence, which are a medal with a sash, a certificate, and a lapel pin, and the first will be granted at this year's Quest for Excellence Conference. And I have to have a big shout out here for the Baldrige Consultant Community, and especially for Lori Kirkland, who got a Kurt Ryman Baldrige Scholarship started, and this scholarship will go to two uh, and hopefully in the future more um, individuals from MHA programs and graduate programs around the country who would like to attend Baldrige Examiner training in Gaithersburg. And these two scholarships will be offered in Kurt Ryman's name and the kickoff for that will be during the foundation luncheon this year at Quest. So thank you, Lori, and thank you to all of the consultants out there who contributed to get this kicked off. Lastly, on fundraising, and probably most importantly, the foundation itself never experienced greater success with fundraising than it did with Secretary Verity and President Reagan when the foundation was first formed. And so Secretary Ross, uh, having engaged him, has asked for specific talking points, and we're going to coordinate with the secretary to re-engage him in the fundraising process, and we're extremely excited about that. Just another way that he has demonstrated his support for the program. Under operations, I want to talk about a few things. As you all know now, the Quest sponsorships are a responsibility of the foundation. As an example, last year, we were extremely excited to bring on a major sponsor like Ford. Uh, once again, approaching the major manufacturers in the United States for support for the Baldrige program. And this year, we expect to do exceedingly well as we did last year. We received an impact grant because grants being integral to what we do here as well, uh, wrote an impact grant that IBM helped us to uh, build a new infrastructure for not just our website, but a new strategy for communicating across the entire digital space. That and our Google grant, which led us to uh, Baldridge ads, uh, each of those uh, grants was approximately $100,000. And this particular ad has, or grant has allowed us, if you dial in Baldridge on just about any search engine, you get the Baldridge Foundation and the Baldridge program that come up almost immediately. And we've been able to use Google in that way thanks to the grant that they provided to us for nonprofits. Lastly, in marketing, I want to thank Dr. Mark Wade, who works all of our strategic communications. Uh, he works all of our website work, all of our social media, and all of our press releases. You can see this press release here uh, for uh, Larry Potterfield receiving the E. David Spong Lifetime Achievement Award. So if you need help in communications and you're out there in a state-based program, contact Mark 
and Mark will be more than happy to guide you and, and give you some recommendations on how you can improve your communications as well. Lastly, I want to tell everybody the 30th Quest for Excellence Conference is April 8th through 11th. We will have a table there. I'll be there personally, and I look forward to talking to each and every one of you. At this time, I'm going to turn over the uh, presentation to Bob Fangmeyer, the director of the Baldrige Performance Excellence Program, and uh, his team up there in Gaithersburg. Bob? Uh, Thanks, Al. Um, yeah, as Al said, I have the privilege and honor of serving as the director of the Baldrige Performance Excellence Program. And I promised Al and Brian that I would keep it short. So my intent is to uh, share with you some of the things that are happening with the program from an operational perspective and then from a strategic perspective. Um, so Jerry, if you would, next slide. So the first thing on operations was celebration. As noted by Al, the foundation's advocacy efforts have paid off. And al although there have been many small and large victories over the past six years, this one is truly momentous. Uh, so we took about 45 minutes on Monday morning to celebrate, to catch our breath, and to thank Al and the foundation for their efforts. Then, of course, it was back to work, focused on the many events right around the corner, most of which are paired to the Baldrige Quest for Excellence conference. conference which Al mentioned just a moment ago. The first of those events is a meeting with the GEM Group, the Global Excellence Model Council. GEM is an affiliation of national award programs from across the globe. We meet once or twice a year to share updates, share best practices, and anticipated modifications to our various excellence models. There are currently 11 members, Australia, Brazil, China, Europe, India, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, Singapore, Spain, and Portugal as a unit, and the US. And we're having some strategic discussions around how to expand uh, our uh, role and add value to our membership uh, during the Quest Conference. The next two are meetings of the Baldridge Executive Fellows Program. First is closing out last year's cohort, and then the next meeting on the next day is actually kicking off the 2018 cohort. The Fellows Program is one of our newer offerings. It's been extremely successful, and it's a year-long executive-level leadership development program that focuses on providing the opportunity for these senior executives to visit with and learn from Baldrige Award recipient organizations and their senior leaders. The curriculum focuses on senior leadership's roles, responsibilities, and best practices across the various Baldrige criteria. And each fellow also works on a capstone project of strategic importance to their organization throughout the course of the year. Then on Sunday, um, April 8th, we will have the 30th annual awards ceremony featuring Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross and we will honor and celebrate our five award recipients from 2017. Bristol, Tennessee Essential Services, Stellar Solutions, Adventist Health Castle in Hawaii, South Central Foundation, a two-time award recipient from Alaska, and the city of Fort Collins in Colorado. Also on Sunday, we have a number of pre-conference workshops, including one that Al mentioned, the cybersecurity workshop. If you would like to attend any of those, you can register on our website. Early the next morning on Monday, the Quest Conference begins, and we'll be showcasing the best practices and the lessons learned from our five current and 12 prior award recipients. I'll mention that we'll be recognizing the Foundation Awards during the conference, but we'll also have the opportunity at various points to recognize the Baldrige Examiners, the Judge, judges, the Baldrige overseers, as well as the 10 communities that are now on a journey to excellence through the Communities of Excellence 2026 Learning Collaborative. Shortly after Quest, we roll right into examiner training at NIST where we bring 400 volunteers through to be trained as Baldrige examiners. We train approximately 130 each week for three weeks. These examiners represent around 350 different organizations from every different sector and nearly every state. 
we do reserve some of the seats and training for individuals who wish to attend the training for the learning, but for one reason or another uh, are not able to serve as examiners. Since they're not serving as volunteers, they do pay a fee to participate in the training. The last big event prior to the award evaluation process, which occurs over the summer, is the receipt of applications for the award. Now, we don't know the final numbers of applications for 2018 yet. The due date is April 24th, but we do expect a modest increase over last year's numbers, so we're excited about that. Okay, Jerry, next slide. From a strategic perspective, um, Continue our efforts to ensure program sustainability. Well, we've actually had some members of the Baldrige community ask us about the 2.2 million in, in federal funding and whether that will dramatically alter our business model and realign our strategic objectives. The simple answer is no. The 2.2 more than covers the gap between our revenues, which by the way have grown nearly 300% over the past six years, and our costs, which have decreased by more than 65% over the past six years, but there's no guarantees of funding in the future. Certainly, those funds will allow us to tweak our approaches and our strategies, but will not significantly impact our larger strategic objectives, which include continuing to support the foundation's advocacy and fundraising efforts, to the extent we're allowed, continuing to carefully manage our costs and increase our revenues, continuing to work with the foundation and the alliance to strengthen the alignment, integration, and efficiency of the entire Baldrige enterprise, and continuing to strive to provide ever-increasing value to our customers and key stakeholders. So the next bullet could be considered both operational and strategic. December 2018 is the anticipated date for release of a revised Baldrige framework and criteria for performance excellence. So we're now in the process of collecting recommendations, dialoguing with leaders of high-performing organizations, studying the literature around leadership management and performance practices, and improving the process by which we come to a consolidated list of recommended changes. If you or if anyone you know has thoughts or suggestions, please send them to us at the program here using the email address iday at nist.gov. That's I-D-A-Y at N-I-S-T dot G-O-V. Last summer, the Baldridge Board of Overseers and the panel of judges both recommended that we explore the potential to both enhance and streamline the Baldridge Award process. So we've been exploring it. We've had a number of focus groups. We've interviewed various leaders. We've been reviewing survey responses and feedback that we've heard from our customers and other stakeholders. And we've drafted a potential redesign of the Baldrige Award process. The goals of the redesign would be to streamline the process, to decrease the resources required to participate by all, now that means applicants, examiners, and judges, increase the value of that participation. And of course, no matter what we do, we wanna protect the integrity and the effectiveness of the Baldrige evaluation process. We will be piloting the potential redesign this summer and any next steps will be based upon what we learn from the pilot. Despite the financial challenges of the past six years, there have been a couple of initiatives that we have invested in uh, during this time. And they are the Baldridge Cybersecurity Excellence Program, which Al touched on earlier, and our extensive participation in the Communities of Excellence 2026 effort. Both of these areas help address critical needs for our nation. They increase exposure to and use of the Baldridge framework and are things that we feel are important to continue uh, to invest in. So we'll continue our work in these areas and we will strive to be able to stand up full programs for both in a not too distant future. So those are my quick updates and I'll turn it back over to Jerry and turn it over to Brian Lasseter. Thank you, Bob. And I think we're ready to go. Thank you everybody for dialing in today. Uh, many on the call are uh, 
affiliated somehow with Alliance member programs, either as executive directors or judges or examiners or volunteers, but many aren't. So I, I wanted to offer just a few seconds of context of who we are and how we fit into the enterprise, and then like Bob and Al share what's up with the Alliance. Um, the Alliance really is often where excellence starts. We are the feeder system, if you will, to the national program. We were founded in, in 2005, and the Alliance serves as a consortium of all 30 Baldur's Bay state regional sector-based programs across the nation. Um, our mission as an alliance is to support these member programs as they advance excellence in their communities and, and in their regions. Um, most of our program, all of our programs offer Baldur's Bay services, award programs, assessments of, of a variety of types, but many also use, uh, offer um, complementary supportive products like workshops and conferences and other types of training to support continuous improvement and excellence in, in the areas in, we, in which we work. I mentioned the Alliance's 30 programs. We serve all 50 states and uh, all six U.S. territories. Uh, to give you a sense of our reach and our scale, uh, we received 1,447 applications last year. 160 of them are full. We see 25 received top-level awards either at a state, region, or sector-level program. Uh, with quite the workforce, 41 paid staff, and 502 volunteers on top of the 1,700 examiners that the Alliance trains every year, 25,000 volunteer hours collectively across our programs. In addition to the core Baldridge work, um, about two-thirds of us offer conferences in our, in our regions and communities. Uh, in addition to that, we're now partnering with the Baldridge program and the foundation to host the Baldridge Fall Conference last year in Arizona, uh, this upcoming fall in uh, Colorado. About 18,000 members across the system and a combined budget of $9 million. So a few things that we've done in the last 90 days and, and the message will change next time we host this webinar. We launched a new front door to the Alliance. It's baldridgealliance.org. I invite you to check it out. Um, it lists all of the Alliance member programs, a little bit about us and, and some supporting resources. I mentioned briefly the fall conference. Uh, this year is the week of October 22nd. It's in the Denver area, um, put on in collaboration with Rocky Mountain Performance Excellence and Wisconsin Center for Performance Excellence. We're excited to have a, a program that's a stronger or stronger than last year's. Uh, many of you know that we gained access to a tool called Baldur's Express. There's a companion product called Baldur's Explorer. It's a survey-based instrument that's uh, an easier way to engage with this proven framework for organizations that just want to get started. The Alliance purchased the rights to the, to the tools about a year and a half ago, and all of the Alliance member programs now are, are selling it in their, in their regions and their communities. So if you haven't seen it, I invite you to take a look at it. It's a great way to get started if, you, if you're a little intimidated by the, the more formal award processes. Uh, very recently, we expanded access uh, to Alliance membership to all that want to help Baldridge grow. In the past, we were only available to state-based, regional-based, sector-based Alliance or uh, Baldridge-based programs. We have now uh, authorized a new category of membership that allows everyone else that wants to join the Alliance uh, to become part of the network. This includes consultants and, and organizations of all types. Uh, as mentioned a couple of times before by Al and by Bob, um, the Alliance has done our part to try to help support the foundation's work with advocacy and restoring the funding. So Al mentioned New Hampshire and Alabama and, and many or most of, I know the Alliance member programs have been trying to contact legislatures and, and um, and advance the advocacy efforts across across the country. We'll continue to do so. And Bob mentioned this too. We're collaborating with the other parts of the enterprise to identify strategies and new business models that uh, allow us all to be more consistent, uh, more efficient, more sustainable in all of our work. And that that effort will continue moving forward. It's a little bit about what the alliance has been up to the last 90 days, and and back to you, Al. I think we're about ready for questions. Okay, um, the first one that I want to 
talk about is uh, the first question would go to Bob Fangmeyer. And Bob, the question is, what are we doing across the enterprise to grow applications at the national level? Had to unmute, sorry. Uh, well, this is a, a multi-pronged effort and it incorporates uh, sort of the partnership we have with uh, the Alliance as well as other uh, organizations. Um, you know, we are looking for opportunities to grow applications throughout the entire pipeline. Um, many of you are aware that we have a eligibility process that uh, has as one of its base requirements that the organization have earned the top level state or regional award before applying to the Baldrige National Program. There are some exceptions to that, but that's a, that's a basic requirement. And so we need to look at this as an entire enterprise and that's what we're trying to do. So there have been a number of efforts and frankly, that is one of the key strategies that we are talking about uh, going forward with uh, the enterprise uh, effort. Brian, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Well, no, I think that's good. I, I think the Baldrige program and the Alliance member programs have been finding ways to better align and better integrate our work systems. So I, I think that's one good example, Bob, and we continue to explore other, other models that might work to make us more consistent, more efficient, and just offer better products to the nation. So more to come on that. And I think just one more little tidbit, you know, one of the reasons we have been moving into areas like communities and cybersecurity is to expand our reach. And the further we can reach, the more organizations we can engage at any level of Baldrige, uh, the better off we are in terms of ultimately growing that pool of, of applicants uh, and uh, national award recipients. Okay, uh, a quick one to answer is, and, and I want to restate this from the uh, beginning of the presentation, um, a copy of this complete presentation to include the PDF copy of the slides as well as the presentation with the narrative itself will all be available on the Baldrige Foundation website at the conclusion of the webinar later today. The next question we have is, Brian, I think this one is directly for you. Can you tell us more about the Baldrige Fall Conference and details for the conference for this upcoming uh, fall? Yeah, we're very, very close to inking a contract for that. It will be the week of October 22nd, that third week of October. I'm not 100% sure of the dates yet that week and uh, not 100% sure of the hotel. We were very close to one and, and we'll finalize that hopefully within the next few days. So watch for watch for an announcement from us, uh, certainly by Quest. That's our hope is to have all of those details ready to announce about a week and a half from now. I'll tell you one, one exciting thing that uh, Liz and Heidi and the team have been working on, just so you can plan your schedules accordingly. It'll be a full day conference as it has been in the past with a pre-conference day before. And some of the contents of the pre-conference will be fairly traditional, a Baldridge 101 type offering and something for early users of Baldridge. But they also want to do a, a road trip to Fort Collins to tour the city of Fort Collins and, uh, and maybe other organizations in, in the region that have won Baldridge and, and sample some of the local <laughs> brews and, and get out and network a bit with some of the users of Baldridge. So, um, Plan your schedules accordingly. The pre-conference may have some other little twist to it. Okay, uh, the next question, I'm gonna try to loop and group some of the, uh, we're getting overrun with questions here, so I'm gonna try to loop and group some of the questions together. Uh, one of them is, um, what can we do to ensure that we retain the funding in the future? Uh, as part of that, some uh, Mac asked out in Texas, what can states do to help further extend the program? And others have asked about the engagement uh, on the federal side in terms of the advocacy mission. So uh, here's where we're at. Um, we have built some really good relationships now with members of Congress in both the House and the Senate, but there's always change and there's going to be further change. All you have to do is watch the evening news to know that federal agency heads are changing uh, pretty rapidly here. and also, members of Congress, um, especially with the upcoming midterm elections, uh, more than 40 have elected not to run for their current seats. And so what that will cause is not only a shakeup in terms of members of Congress, 
and in the Senate, but also in the chairs and ranking members for each of the subcommittees. And so we're keeping a close eye on that to ensure that whoever takes those leadership positions uh, remains on board with supporting Baldrige. And two, we want to even deep, uh, more deeply uh, engage them, and especially at the state level. So to answer Mac's question down in Texas specifically, some of the things that you can do. Uh, one of the things that we try to do here at the foundation, and you can help us, is to keep apprised of who your award recipients are at the state level. Because one of the things we try to do is send them a congratulatory letter, and we also send members of their your congressional delegation a congratulatory letter as well. And so if you have a national award recipient, uh, we will contact their member of the house in their district or districts if they have a large geographic footprint. And then we'll also send the two senators from your state a letter uh, apprising them of the award recipients achievements and also to the governor of that state. We would like to expand that to state highest level award recipients as well, because the more we can show them all of the great things that are taking place across this Baldrige enterprise in each and every state. Even if you don't have a national award recipients, you have state award recipients and share that good news. Now, in addition to that, what you can do is invite them to your state conference to help share in presenting the awards possibly, or at least celebrating the awards with their constituents. They love taking pictures and doing those types of things. You could also take the award recipient CEO and some members of the leadership team to your member of Congress or to your Senator's office to again, uh, formalize that relationship, tell them what it is, all the great things that they have done to receive that award and another great opportunity for a photo. Um, members of Congress love those opportunities because it helps them show community engagement. And so those are the things that you can do follow up with not only state award recipients, but national award recipients. In addition to that, uh, contacting each member of your state delegation, each member of Congress and your two senators to apprise them of your state conference that is taking place and a little bit about it. Invite them to the state conference. A best practice that we will hopefully get to in replicating around the country is one from New Mexico that Julia Gabaldon started out there, which was to make each member of Congress in New Mexico and both senators honorary board members on her board and a number of their staffers in their individual offices would attend her state conference on an annual basis to learn more about the program and all of the great things happening in quality New Mexico. That is just a broad brush um, snapshot of all of the things that we're going to do over the next couple of years to retain this funding. Things that hadn't been done over the last 28 years since the program's inception in terms of advocacy. Um, critical to our future. Getting in the federal budget is one thing, staying in it is a completely different thing, especially with shakeups in leadership. And we don't ever want again to happen what happened to us in 2011, when members of Congress failed to support the program because they didn't understand it and didn't understand the impact it was having in their own districts. And so we will never let that happen again from a foundation standpoint, which is why the advocacy mission is so critically important to us in supporting the Baldrige program. As we do that, strengthening fundraising into the future will help us do specifically targeted things like help strengthen state programs, um, help deploy new initiatives across the 50 states throughout our state programs, help fund things like the new cybersecurity um, initiative at the, at the federal level so that we can build out at some point a cybersecurity framework and have a cybersecurity conference specifically dedicated to cybersecurity using the Baldrige framework. Clear examples of where we would like to go in the future and build on this organization. So with that, I'm going to have to close out in terms of uh, questions and just thank everybody for everything that you're doing out there to help promote Baldrige, to help work together to strengthen this enterprise of ours. Uh, in the future, I think these webinars are gonna be more focused on individual topics that will help us leverage our capability across the country to strengthen our synergy and our communications from top to bottom and left to right. So if you have ideas on how to do that, 
please send them to Brian or Bob or myself via email on what you would like to see in the future as a customer of these webinars. And we will try to build an agenda around those topics that the vast majority of people want to hear. Again, thank you for dialing in today and have a great weekend. See you all at Quest.